Hello, and welcome to today's video, where we're going to be looking at this PlayStation 3. This PS3 I bought at a Goodwill for $10, because it said that it was broken and it needed parts. As you can see, it is working, but it is not completely working. So, if you see right here, we have a PS3 game, which nobody cares about, which I'm using as a sacrificial disc, just in case something goes wrong. And we paste our disc in our PS3. We can see that nothing is happening. The disc is not appearing here, and nothing is happening. That is the problem with this, is that the Blu-ray drive just does not work. Luckily, it doesn't eat discs, and it will properly eject the disc, but it won't read them, and it won't do anything if I put a disc inside. I do have a spare Blu-ray drive, or rather a replacement Blu-ray drive that I bought. So we're going to put that in here and see if we can make it work. So if you're wondering how I got anything to run the PS3 at all, because as you might know, on PS3s, if you don't have a Blu-ray drive installed or it's not working, you can't get anything to run at all. Um, so when I first got this PS3, what happened was I powered it on and it brought up a screen saying it was trying to install an update and then it would just crash and give me an error. I turned the PS3 off, turned my gone, tried it again, and still got the same error. Looking up the error code, I discovered that it meant that the Blu-ray drive was broken or possibly even disconnected. So I opened it up, I noticed the Blu-ray drive cable was loose, I took it out, plugged it back in, and then the update finished. And then I was able to um, use the web browser and a flash drive to hack this PS3 to install a custom firmware, and I installed specifically a no BD firmware, because it's a special firmware that will let you use the console without a Blu-ray drive, because even on custom firmware, if you don't have a Blu-ray drive, you can't open anything, even if installed on the hard drive. You need a special no BD firmware to be able to open apps that are installed on the hard drive with a broken Blu-ray drive. Don't know why Sony did that, but that's what we're here to fix today. Hopefully I can replace the Blu-ray drive with the new one, and then install a proper custom firmware on here and see what happens. So I don't know who had this PS3 before me or who donated it to Goodwill because when I got it I noticed there were like there's supposed to be a little thing here and a little cover here and a screw here and that screw is missing which means that I can just take the front kind of cover off and luckily on the system here all the screws you need to open it up are labeled with these little arrows so I do wonder if the person who had this before me tried to fix it themselves and failed or something. Maybe that's why the Blu-ray cable was loose and that's why the update wouldn't install. Like, I'm not really sure what the story with this PS3 is. All I know it was 10 bucks at Goodwill, so might as well buy it and see what I can do with it. So, all of these screws are the same, except... This one up here has an S on it, and that's because that is a shorter screw than the rest of them. So it was kind of nice of Sony to point out which screw is the different one, even though they obviously don't want you to open these things up because, you know, it's a console. They don't want you to try to fix it yourself. Luckily... There's nothing too crazy once you take this top panel off, or rather I don't need to go any deeper because the console does work, all you need to do is replace the Blu-ray drive, so hopefully this should be a simple, simple fix. Man, I guess I put these screws in a bit tighter when I opened this up before. As you can see, the screw is a little bit shorter than the other ones. Luckily, every other screw, like I said, is the same length except that one. So, pretty easy. Yep. And then with all those screws out, this just comes off. Inside the PS3, we have our power supply. And here is our Blu-ray drive. 
the Blu-ray drive is actually screwed in by the screws that we took out, so we can simply just lift it up and really carefully take the, well first take this cable off the side here, and then very carefully remove the ribbon cable here. That's one of those zero insertion force cables where you have to flip up the little thing here to get the cable out. I did also buy a replacement of this cable because, like I said, when I first got it, this cable wasn't attached to the drive, and that's why the update wouldn't install. So after reconnecting this, I got the PS3 to actually boot and install the update, but it still won't read discs, and it still won't boot anything off of the drive without a no BD firmware, so that means there's something definitely wrong, so I don't know if this cable is the problem or this drive is the problem, but figured I might as well replace both and see what happens. So this PS3 is one of the crazy things is that this board here is paired, or I think married is the term that we use, with the console. So even if I replace this drive, I have to take off this board and put it on the new drive, otherwise nothing will work at all. So again, more of these little cables, just flip this up, flip this up, and take the cables out very gently, one over here, oh, flip it up, yep, up, flip up, dang it, there we go. And then there's this one under some tape. That one looks a bit harder to get out, so I will take this cable off, unscrew this board off camera, and then I will show you how to put it onto the new drive. Okay, so I've removed the special board from the old Blu-ray drive. I had to be a little careful because I didn't realize there is a little teeny tiny wire right here that was attached to the side of this board. It didn't break anything, and this board should be fine. So now we have to take this board and slide it into this drive. Annoyingly, you have to take off these three screws here and then slide the board underneath that and then screw it down. And then you would plug in this cable and then all the other cables. Okay, so I got the daughter board reattached to, this is the new Blu-ray drive. Um, people I bought this Blu-ray drive from said they opened it up and they replaced the laser on the inside, so hopefully this works. I also put a new warranty sticker with their name on it. So, I got the little teeny tiny connector here attached. So now to get the little other ones, these are insertion force cables. You just open the little latch, just slide the cable in gently. And then close the lid. That's it. This one too. Slide it up to the little black line. And then push down. Next one. Slide it in. To the line. Push down. And this final one. Sort of make sure it's in there push down. So on my old drive this cable had this little piece of tape on it so I'm gonna put that back here. Not sure why it was there but might as well put it back. Next I'm gonna use this which is a new Blu-ray ribbon cable compared to the one that was in there. Don't know which if the cable was the problem, but might as well use a new one. Interestingly, my new one says one and the old one says two on it. Don't know if that matters. So this went into the console, same way, zero insertion force, slide it in, click down. Before I do that, let's take our this cable and plug it in to the drive. Hopefully in the right way. Is that in there? Or is it upside down? Oh, I guess that was right. 
Oh, yep, there we go. That one's in. Pretty sure that is our power cable. This is the power supply. So, then finally, I will attach this cable to the back of the drive. I'm gonna do that off camera because it's a little hard to do. Alrighty, I put the cable in the back of the drive and I connected the power cable here. Now I plug this in. I'm gonna turn it on. And in the school of things that are totally a good idea, power it on. Since I took the top case off, I can't put press the buttons. So we need to tap the power button here with the screwdriver to turn it on. Now, since it's, this is running a no BD firmware, I don't know if putting a disk in will do anything, even if this drive works. I just mostly want to make sure the PS3 still turns on which it's not is it on don't know if it's working I put it just in I guess it took the disk the light is on saying there's a disk in there and I can hear it spinning don't know what's happening Maybe my mon maybe it is on, my monitor is just not showing it to me. Huh. So I put the case back on, I got a different HDMI cable, and now it seems to power on. It did before off camera. There we goes. Yes, one is HDMI. It's saying that because I held down the power button, try to get into recovery mode, and I think that reset the video. So, okay, good. The PS3 does turn on, and I don't know if putting a disc in here will work because this is a no BD firmware, but I guess I can try. Okay, so that drive isn't like taking in discs, but it did eject it before, so I think the drive is fine. Let's see if this does anything. I don't know, it might not. Oh, yeah, I'm not seeing anything on the screen, but it is also because, the, uh, or rather, it might be because this is a no BD firmware, so even if the drive does work, this firmware might not even be looking at it, so. I'm going to have to replace this firmware with a proper custom firmware and then see if the drive works. I will do that. Okay, so I've updated the PS3 back to uh, Bug, which is the custom firmware that I normally use on here. This is a normal version, not a no BD version. So let's see if the drive works by taking our PS3 game and kicking it in. Doesn't seem like it's doing anything that's not good. Um, maybe something else is wrong with this console and replacing the Blu-ray drive and the ribbon was a waste of time. I do not know. So one other test is if there's something wrong with the Blu-ray drive then you cannot open things that are installed on the hard drive. Even in like custom firmware or anything. That's why there's no BD firmware, which is what I had installed previously, but I don't now. So let's see if something like ScumVM will open. So what should happen is it should, you know, open, but yeah, but as you see now, it's just a black screen, which means there's still something wrong with the console, because it should still open because it's installed on the hard drive. So the fact that this isn't opening means there's still something wrong with this and I don't know what it is. There could be something wrong with like the logic board, like the actual motherboard or other things, so I don't really know. 
I'd love to do more research and see if I can repair this, and I we hope that placing the Blu-ray drive wasn't a waste of money, but oh well, so I guess that's all for this video, because um, it the PS3 is no better than it was before. Oh well. Okay, a quick update on the PS3. I'm not sure if I'm going to splice this into the existing video or make a new one, but I found out that there may be a way to fix this. I wonder if the person who worked on this swapped out the board on the Blu-ray drive and didn't remarry it to the console, and that's why the Blu-ray drive isn't working. So, I'm going to be trying that now. I have found a custom version of Rebug, the latest version of Rebug that is a no BD version. So, I'm going to install that, and then using that, I'm going to try to remarry the Blu-ray drive to the console and see if that fixes it. If that doesn't fix it, I'm going to need to probably buy a new Blu-ray board, which means we're going to have to remarry that anyway, so let's just try this and see if it works. This update hopefully won't take too long to install, so I'm just going to let it go and see if it can install Rebug. Here we go. Waiting for it to install. Okay, well we got our NodeBD version of Rebug installed, so now we need to install Rebug Toolbox. There we go. Open that up. And make sure to set a few things here. Once this loads, there we go. I want to make sure this is enabled, which it is. Then under utilities here, we want to make sure we dump the root key here. We need this in order to remarry the Blu-ray drive. Alright, hopefully that worked. Let's check. Open up our file manager. See if, I remember, see if I remember where to put it. It did say it on the screen, so let's see if I can find where the file is. Alright, let's open our file manager. Close all these windows that I had opened before. Go our drive, our hard drive, games, I think it was. No. Game. There we go. Toolbox, user directory. And I think there's two of them. Oh, okay. Looks like I did it once before on previous firmware, or is it both of these files that I need? And I ran the dump EID rookie again, and now we have the file we need. So we copy that to our flash drive. Might be a good idea to back up this file later on, but for now I'll just copy that to the flash drive. Okay, I don't know why it was being so difficult before, but we have our root key dumped, and we have it copied to the root of our flash drive. So now is the interesting part. Let's quit this and go back to our menu, and now we need to enter factory service mode. Factory service mode is the mode you would enter when you use the old school PS3 jig, the jailbreak USB stick. But luckily now we can just get into it by clicking on factory service mode. Once this reboots, we go back to the menu again and select marry the Blu-ray drive. And if all goes well, since we have our root key on our flash drive and we're in factory service mode, we should hopefully remarry our Blu-ray drive, and it may even fix it without me having to replace the board. So now we should get a big message on the screen saying we're in factory service mode. Also you can notice we're in odd resolution, that's fine. So custom firmware tools again, service tools, advanced service tools, 
we marry. Let's see if this fixes anything. So I was having some trouble with remarrying here. When I clicked on it, it would just freeze up the whole system. And I think it had to do with the flash drive, because I copied the file to a different flash drive. Now if I click on it, it actually does something. It says failed, but this is a no BD firmware. So the fact that it says failed may actually mean it still worked? I don't know. So we'll have to test whether it worked anyway, even though it said that it failed. Okay, so I don't know whether or not remarry worked, but let's just try to leave factory service mode and see what happens. Like I said, sometimes it'll say failed even though it really worked due to the no BD firmware, and because the no BD firmware patches out a lot of the calls to the Blu-ray drive, I think, or something like that, so it's possible it did still work. Let's find out, I guess. I guess I can try a movie first before I try a game. Oh, this is a console doing here. Okay. Wait. Ah, uh, this. I guess I didn't like that I forced shut it down when the remarry crashed. But, like, it should be fine. Yep, there we go. There's nothing really on here, so this shouldn't really take any time at all. And it's done. Okay. So I don't know if I can stick a Blu-ray movie in or a game in and have it work while it's on the no BD firmware. I may have to update to a normal firmware first. So let's just stick a disc in and see what happens, I guess. Didn't put flash drive in there anymore. Um Don't think anything's happening. So I don't know if the remarry failed. Don't know if this firmware doesn't like discs. I don't know if I need to get a new board, a new Blu-ray board. So I'm gonna assume if this isn't working, then playing a game isn't gonna work either. So I'm gonna try to update to a normal firmware and see what happens. Okay, so I've left factory service mode and reinstalled the full version of Rebug, not the no BD version, so now let's try to put a disc in and see what happens. Oh, because I don't need the flash drive anymore. Oh! I, look at that! Let's open our movie. See if I can watch it. I think I may have just fixed this. Maybe that was the whole problem. Maybe the person you owned this before tried to fix it and didn't realize that you had to remarry the board to the the blue board to the motherboard. This is an invalid disc. Okay. I think there was something about having to reload special like keys or certificates or something for watching Blu-ray movies. I can try to fix that in the future, but what I really want to know is if I can play a PS3 game. So let's try that. Just load that up. Oh! 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 Yeah! Okay! I think our PS3 is, is working again. $10 PS3, totally working. I probably didn't need to buy the replacement Blu-ray drive. I probably could have just kept the other one and just done this free and thing from the beginning and everything would have worked. Oh well, live and learn, I guess. Anyway, now I have a working PS3 that I don't know what I'm going to do with because I already have a PS3. But now I have another one, and it works, so... Because I can use it for... I don't know. Whatever I want. Anyway, that's it for this video. So, 
Thank you for watching.